and yet it is so powerful. Wonderful his love for me. It is so good to be walking with God. It is so good to know the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the privilege to ask our Brother Wing to come, and he's going to share with us from Teen Challenge. We have a, a mixture of, uh, of uh, videos that he's going to show and some other things, but I'm going to turn it over to you now, Brother. Thank you. Is it on? Yeah. I oh, okay. Well, good morning. Um, my name is Wing. Um, Wing Eng is uh, the full name. Um, Wing is uh, W-I-N-G, but uh, lots of people insist that it's W-A-Y-N-E, but that's okay. <clears throat> um, my name is, uh, my, my, I'm a retired engineer and uh, volunteer at Teen Challenge now. Uh, I'm glad to be part of your service today. Um, we, uh, because of the pandemic, we, we, we normally bring a team of students along with us, so there, there would be four of us. But um, for today, you just have me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I just like to capsulize what Teen Challenge is with this uh, Ephesians 4.22. It says, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. That's what Teen Challenge tries to do with the people that comes there. So I understand that the last time we've been in this church is uh, 2012, quite a while ago. So uh, most of you know, still know about Teen Challenge? I know the pa pastor does, <laughs> yes. Okay, well, you got to hear about it anyway. So uh, Teen Challenge is uh, founded in 1960 by Pastor David Wilkerson uh, in New York City because he was ministering to the youth gangs there. Um, so it has grown since, uh, since grown to a worldwide organization. In Canada, our core mission is to minister to, uh, to help men and women struggling with addiction of all kinds. Uh, we are a 12-month uh, faith-based center, a faith-based God-centered residential program serving, serving uh, people from 18 to 65 years old. So uh, don't get fooled by the word teen in our name. Um, uh, there are men and women centers, and uh, in, um, under the, the, the Teen Challenge Canada organization, there are nine uh, centers for men and women. And there are nine other independent Teen Challenge centers. It tend to go by provinces, uh, basically B uh, BC and Manitoba and Quebec are not part of the Teen Challenge Canada organization, but they're still Teen Challenge. Um, the Teen Challenge uh, uh, program relies on the transformation through Jesus Christ by faith, and that's it. We have a certified addiction counselor, but we do not focus on addiction. Uh, rather, we uh, focus on helping the, the, each student to get to know Jesus Christ as, and his, learn about his way of life. And that's what brings on the transformation. Uh, the cost of substance abuse in Alberta is, uh, well, it's very high everywhere, but in Alberta alone, uh, the, the number, the, the, most, the latest number I have is from 2014. The cost is $5.54 billion. That's a lot of money. And uh, across Canada, it was uh, 38.4 billion. Um, in 2018, uh, in Alberta, there were 746 OPI-related deaths. And that is uh, more than two lives being lost to this horrible thing um, every day of the year. Uh, Teen Challenge is one of the few faith-based uh, programs to help these people. There are many uh, rehab programs out there. Uh, most of the secular treatment centers, uh, they achieve a success rate of five to 10%. And by success rate, I mean people go through the program uh, and manage to stay free of addiction uh, five years from graduation. So uh, Teen Challenge, we achieve a, a rate of about 50%. And, uh, that might not be high to some of you, but uh, in the industry of rehabilitation, that's very high. And so some people attributed that to the Jesus factor, and we're not ashamed of that. Um, 
There, there, to me, there, there's really no cure for addiction. The narcotics, especially the synthetic drugs today, are so powerful. Um, everybody heard here about fentanyl now, and a, a few grains, just of grains like salt grains or sugar, sugar grains, a few grains of pure fentanyl is enough to kill an adult person. And fentanyl is, uh, is used in places like uh, um, tranquilizing large mammals like elephants. So I believe that the, the only way to get off of this powerful addiction is the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Um, I see that people get addicted because they're trying to fill voids in their hearts. They want to, they have pains and, and uh, wounds that, they, they, that don't get healed. And they experience, and they have, um, uh, they want to get away from unresolved problems in their homes, in their uh, school and whatnot. Uh, but drugs and alcohol can only numb us for a few minutes or a few hours or even days, but it never lasts. Only Jesus Christ can fill our voice and heal our pains. Teen Challenge is committed to provide a safe environment for, um, for the students to have uh, to get their lives transformed by learning about Jesus Christ and to get healed. Uh, to ensure that this happens, uh, the students uh, basically committed to stay in our premise for 12 months and they have to give up all their personal electronic devices so no cell phone, no internet for that time. Um, and uh, they can only get make contact with the outside world in a super, under supervision. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's not an easy program. Um, when a student graduated from our program, he would have completed a number of con uh, study contracts, self-paced self study contracts, uh, that include memory verses, uh, doing book report, study report on uh, New Testament books, um, and other Christian writings, and also uh, topical studies. So um, um, by most, most of them would have done a book report on every book in the New Testament except Revelation. Um, each morning, for the students, starts with personal devotion. Devotion, and uh, weekday mornings there's a chapel uh, service, and uh, uh, done by the staff mostly. But they also have guest uh, speaker come in too. Um, <clears throat> there's also a classroom session uh, that do the uh, topical Bible studies. Uh, students are given work assignments in the afternoons. Um, they, we call that work therapy. That teaches them teamwork and good work ethics. Um, the center is um, self-sustained because the students, the work therapy, get them to do all the chores, <laughs> outside and inside. <clears throat> so they do all the cleaning, the toilets, and cleaning everywhere else, and laundry, cooking, uh, yard work, and repairs, and so on. <clears throat> they also farm the teams out to. Uh, to people who want to hire them to do chores as well, like painting and whatever, moving. Uh, most students would attest to the love that they receive from the staff and from the student body. And uh, that grows pretty quickly for each class. Uh, they become a tight, very tight knit, knit community that prays for each other, encourage each other, and reprove each other. Um, the fruit of all that is that after a year, a student would graduate as a follower of Jesus Christ and forsaking their former ways, as the pastor had mentioned about his friend. Uh, many students would decide to receive baptism during the year and uh, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Um, all this is why I choose to volunteer at Teen Challenge, uh, which started about 10 years ago uh, after facing my sudden uh, retirement. <laughs> My wife and I were wondering how we are going to get sustained, uh, going to sustain ourselves. Well, where my uh, own effort to find a job, another job, has failed, God just uh, prompted us to trust Him, and uh, He came through, and we never have lacked anything. I was uh, moved after through all this. I was moved to uh, document what I have learned about managing money. Um, not that I'm. A, great one or whatever, but, uh, not that I made a million, uh, but uh, in any case, uh, I felt that, that that was important part of this retirement process, 
So to write it down and to study what the Bible says about money. I didn't do that with any other motive, but as the Lord would have it, uh, I presented this material to uh, the, the, the completed material to the director of Teen Challenge at one point. Uh, Greg Connelson is his name here in uh, Pritis. And uh, he said, for sure, you, you need to show this to the guys. So uh, I've been doing that since once a year at Teen Challenge, along with anything else where we can help. Uh, we have done some cooking there. We have in better times, outside of the pandemic, <laughs> and, and so on. And we do these outreaches too. Uh, Teen Challenge uh, Alberta currently is only a 12-bed facility located in Pritis, which is straight south of here, pretty much. Um, we are really blessed to have a 40-acre plot given to us in the uh, right by the um, um, Fish Creek. What's the other? Uh, <laughs> hmm? No, the, the 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 river, right by the. What? No, it's not Fish Creek, but uh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, it's right by the river there. Uh, so we're also in the floodplain, but anyway, you'll see in a, in a bit. Um, for a number of years, we have worked, very, well, at least the staff has worked very diligently, very hard to, to get uh, all the necessary approval for uh, building, for expanding to a 24-bed facility. Uh, Pritis is a, uh, pretty much an acreage community, so, uh, uh, fairly well to do people there, I presume, and uh, it's not, uh, they, they don't really welcome a rehab center in their midst. But uh, any, anyway, we are excited to share that the expansion is uh, nearly nearing completion now. And uh, the, uh, I see the first slide is up, so you can see the, the uh, so next slide, please. Okay. Uh, you can see the, this is the existing facility uh, that, um, that mid, in the middle of that, that two-story house is the dormitory for the students and their dining uh, hall and so on. Uh, that's quite old. <laughs> and then they added this little trailer on the right in the middle here, uh, this, which is a study area for the students and the teaching, teacher's office. And then they added two, another double-wide trailer in the back uh, for the chapel and classroom and for everybody else's offices. Uh, there's a little brown building on the left there. That's uh, what they call it, the barn, but that's a uh, walk-in fridge there and a freezer there. And also uh, some workshop area as well. So that, that is the existing facility. So uh, next slide. Uh, the, the architects and, and whatnot tells us that there is no way to improve upon the existing facility. So building new is the only option. So this is uh, just a little bit to the east of uh, the existing service would be, uh, existing buildings would be on the bottom of the screen uh, that you it doesn't show there. But uh, the two new buildings uh, that, that uh, is being completed. So uh, on the right is where the, uh, is what we call the ranch house. That's where the whole program is conducted. Uh, from day to day. It houses the classroom, the kitchen, the uh, dining facilities, and the chapel, and uh, all the offices, and so on and so forth. There's even a gym there they put in. Uh, so <laughs> life is good. Um, and uh, that building is um, uh, basically complete. It's, uh, the, the, the power is in, and the uh, uh, internet service and all that have been done. The only thing uh, they're still waiting on is the water to be connected, and that's going to be imminent. So we are hoping that all that will get done by, uh, by April, and that we uh, can get the occupancy permit and move, move the whole program in there in May. So um, the, the, one, the building on the left is a, the dormitory they call the bunkhouse, and uh, that uh, will house 24 students along with six um, um, what we call phase four, uh, those are postgraduate interns. So after the 12-month program, uh, the, some students may choose to stay for another six months in the phase four program. Uh, they help in running the center, but they also uh, is in, supposed to be uh, helping them transition back to society. So um, this is uh, also well underway. All the painting and insula uh, all the insulation is, under, is in place and drywall is up. 
and uh, they're painting it now. And um, so, barring any other obs obstructions, that the the, the, uh, the that should be done in June. Um, and uh, we hope the students can move in in June. And uh, we are hoping to uh, that uh, the rest of the site preparation items, like there's got to be a concrete pad joining the buildings and driveway and landscaping and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we hope all that will be done this year, this summer as well, so that the whole project will be complete, completed by uh, the fall. Um, the project is truly God's provision. Um, it, it costs five point uh, some million dollars. Uh, but there are many supporters, both individuals and businesses, that have come forth, uh, including some very surprising ones. Um, generously, they give to provide the funding. Um, so we are grateful for every one of the donors and give glory for what the Lord has done and what he's going to do with this, uh, these buildings. So that, that is the expansion project. Uh, we're now going to uh, show you some, uh, since the students cannot be here, so you can only see them in video. So we have made some videos for, um, uh, there, I don't know, it depends on um, how you are doing for time. There are three videos that you can see, but I'll show two first and you can, you can decide whether you want to see the third one. The first one, can we uh, show the, uh, the one about Al? Um, Al is a graduate right from Pritis and he is now doing very well. But uh, he has quite a uh, story to tell, so you can see it for yourself. Well, I'll just uh, come down, probably. Okay, well, um, hopefully we can get to see them, but uh, anyway, um, uh, we do these outreaches for two reasons. The first one is just to get the word out about Teen Challenge. So if any one of you know of anybody who is struggling with addiction of any kind, um, do contact us. Now, um, there's a pamphlet that the pastor has that he's going to uh, be distributing to you guys uh, on the, in the mailbox, I guess. Uh, that looks like this. And uh, so the contact information is, uh, is on, the, on the back here. And uh, you can uh, contact us anytime. So uh, 
we, we, we will be able to send you um, pamph other pamphlets and even the application material and so on and so forth. So, so if you know of anybody who, is, uh, who has addiction problems, you know, by all means. And the age limit, like I say, is 18 to 65. So, uh, so um, <clears throat> don't, you know, don't, don't hesitate to call us. And uh, the second reason we do uh, these outreaches is uh, um, that we are self-funded. Uh, we do not receive government money uh, so that we don't dilute our effort of uh, focusing on Jesus Christ. Um, unfortunately, with uh, government money, that, uh, that comes with it. Um, outreach uh, like this is one of the means that we have to, to uh, seek supporters from uh, around the province. Um, so, in, like in a, um, in an, I don't know, I don't know about right now, but uh, in a normal situation, we would have two, at least two, and quite often three teams out there, uh, all around the province. We go as, f as far as Slave Lake. <laughs> so, um, anyway, the the Teen Challenge program itself is, uh, it costs about fifty thousand uh, dollars. Well, costs more than fifty thousand dollars per student for the year. And we only ask each student to contribute $1,000 in fees uh, when they come in. And we have never turned down a students, in fact, if, if they were not able to uh, pay the $1,000. So uh, um, the majority of the program has to be covered by other supporters. The total cost uh, covers the, their room and board for the student and all the study material and 24-7 uh, staffing because that they need to be supervised uh, some, in some form all the, all the time. Um, and as, we, as needed, we even supply the personal items like clothing and even toothpaste, things like that. So if you, see, you feel so led, please uh, do support us. And uh, you can either make a one-time donation or a, uh, uh, you can do a more interactive, a more engaging way by sponsoring a student. Um, on the back of, of the pamphlet is the, a form for the um, for uh, donation, making a donation or sponsoring a student. And on the back of the form are the payment options that you can use. Um, again, because of the pandemic, I'm not supposed to take the donations with me. So, uh, so please fill out that form. I think the form also came with the uh, return envelope, right? So you can just mail it in to us and uh, and. Uh, it will get processed, and uh, uh, for, for sponsoring a student, it costs $40 a month or $480 a year. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can choose the payment option, that, uh, like I say. And uh, once the form is processed, they will be sending you a uh, um, sponsorship card of a student, which has his picture on it and his uh, a short form of his story on there. Um, and uh, as a sponsor, um, you can uh, write to the student any time through the year. Uh, the students are not uh, allowed to contact sponsors directly, so uh, you'll be getting a quarterly uh, letter from him. Um, and the sponsors, uh, uh, some of them, uh, they also send care packages as well. So uh, that's really appreciated, <laughs> as you may imagine. And uh, any of the, uh, an encouraging note or, or prayer that you might send to the students, those are also really cherished and really, I've seen students that really, uh, it, it made a day basically uh, when they get one of these letters from the sponsor. Um, besides that, uh, when, the, when it's not pandemic time, sponsors are all invited to the graduation for the students as well, uh, usually held in the local church and there's always a fellowship, very nice fellowship time after the, serve, uh, after the ceremony. And uh, the sponsors can then co-mingle with the uh, students and staff as they wish. So um, I'll go back to the video now and let you see uh, Al. Beautiful. 
beautifully diverse province. I love living here. Uh, I can't imagine myself living anywhere else. I got married, I was 19, my wife was 16, and two years later we had uh, my daughter Tina, and then three years after that uh, we had another daughter Shannon. We worked hard all week, we partied hard all weekend. We had that lifestyle down to the tea. I can't remember a time when there wasn't alcohol around. And every social activity involved drinking. Any friends that came over? It was always alcohol related. They all did exactly the same thing. I was, by all definition, a functioning alcoholic by the time I was in my mid-20s. October 22nd.
walked into Team Challenge, there was a feeling in there. There was a peace that came over me. And I knew I was supposed to be there. I knew these people were genuine. Thank you. Um, um, you want to show the, the, the lady's uh, video next? I forgot her name. <laughs> you get it? Okay.
And so on April 17th of 2019, my dad had a prayer meeting for me at church with about 10 other people. And they had gotten together and they prayed and were crying out to God to help. And within two days, I had called my mom after that prayer meeting and I called my mom and I said, Mom, I'm going to get help and I'm going to do it. And I had a plan and I did it all by myself and I got out of the addiction and I didn't know that my dad had just had this big prayer meeting for me. And so I was clean for just over six and a half months with God and I was going back to church and I was reading my Bible, I was back praying, I had gotten a job and life was going good. God is good. But once I had thought that I had it under control and that I didn't need God to be the leader of my life anymore, I then relapsed. But I knew that I, that wasn't the lifestyle that I wanted. So then I called my dad and I got into detox right away. And when I was in detox, my dad told me about Teen Challenge. And when my dad said the word Teen Challenge, I didn't even know that it was a year-long program and that I'd have to live here and I wouldn't get to see my family often, but I just felt this peace, even with all of that other, all of those other circumstances, I still felt at peace about coming here. And so I didn't really look into it too much, I just knew that I needed help and I wanted to get help. And then I found out that it was Christian, a Christian facility, and I was so excited to come. So I started the application process, and I got accepted within a month. And so I came in in January. I'm now in my 11th month of being in the program, and I can just see and I look back and all of the growth that has taken place, just glory to God for it. He has been working in my life unbelievably. He's restored family relationships at home. My dad has told me on the phone that he is so proud of me. And it brings me so much joy to know that my dad is proud of me now. I'm just growing so much in my attitude and I'm just learning to trust and lean on God. And what he can do is just so overwhelming that it's, I just love it. I just thank you so much for all of your support and for all of your donations and your sponsorships. It really does help, and this is a life-changing program. Thanks for listening. Okay, well, do you guys want to take the time to see the third uh, person? Okay, then uh, Terrence. I'd go home after a night of drinking. I'd wake up the next morning wanting more. I craved more. And I realized this is not good because I needed the alcohol, the beer to wake me up, to to be able to get up. That's what I was getting up for. It wasn't good enough just getting up to go to work or be a husband or a father. I was getting up for that next drink. The lowest point of my life was when my mom called me. We had an argument and little did I know that that night she would pass away and that would be the last thing I remember was talking to my mom is hanging up on her. Remember the last conversation I had with her was an argument about money. So when I grew up drinking, I started gambling. I put money in and, and when I lost, I was happy because that was the argument I was with my mom. It was about money. I gambled to lose. My addiction really got the best of me when I decided to try and end my life. I went out into the garage and found a rope. I even Googled how to make a noose and tried to hang myself.
after my suicide attempt, I woke up in the hospital and I was angry that it didn't work, that I was alive and I, within minutes, the nurse comes down, sits at my side and says, Tarrant, I see you're interested in the Teen Challenge program. Tarrant, I want you to know that's a good place. I've heard good things about them. They can help you. And as she walked away, I knew this was the sign that I saw after. The moment I walked into Teen Challenge, I knew that that's where God wanted me to be. I knew that was the place that would rehabilitate me. Not only was I affected through my year-long process at Teen Challenge, but also the lives of my wife and my children, how God had restored my marriage, and I was now being able to be the father that I was called to be, and the husband that I was meant to be. Teen Challenge pointed me the direction to Jesus, knowing that Jesus is the ultimate answer to help me overcome my addiction. But because of grace, I have been set free. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that's pretty much how the program that we have. Um, again, because of the pandemic, I, we are not supposed to... Uh, answer questions but I'll, I'll just give a minute here if anybody have a question I'll take them now if you you have question okay well if not then uh, that's all all we got and uh, thank you very much for having us again and pardon me oh sorry Yes, they are. Um, for a relapse program, they have to take. No, let's see. I don't remember. I, I shouldn't say exactly, but they do let them back in. They oh yeah, they cannot come back to the same center. They would have to go to another province. Like all the different centers in, our, in, the, in the different provinces, they cooperate together that way. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know what the exact timeline is, but they will be removed. And I don't know whether they're going to do it this year or next year. Yeah, as soon as they move in, they, the old building re, will be removed. The trailers should be fairly easy because they just haul them away. Yeah. But that old farmhouse is, is very, very old. <laughs> um, believe it or not, for 12 guys, they, they are sleeping in two, uh, two bedrooms, uh, each with two bunk beds. So four guys in a room, well, three bedrooms, I guess. So, and there's only one washroom that they all share in. Yeah. So any, anything else? Okay. Well, if uh, nothing else, then uh, I'll turn it back to the pastor. Well, God bless you all. And thank you so much again for coming yeah. and for sharing with us. Thank you, Wing. You know, it's an important thing, that passage that he read there. If I can untangle myself, there we go. I want to just read it again for you. What he began with there, Ephesians 4, 22 and on, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, to, be put, to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. We all have this urge, this draw, this desire to fill the need. Teen Challenge is a place that works to help people to see that the, the, the answer to the need is Christ. Uh, we don't all get to a place where we are so low in that particular area that we need to, to go to a place or to be in a, in a program like that. But we all have that same need. 
We all have the same temptation to try to fill the needs. And when we look at stories like that, I'm so encouraged. I'm so awestruck by who God is. It doesn't matter how low we are. It doesn't matter what our life situation is. God is the solution. God is the answer. And he's not just a silver bullet, you know, like if yoga didn't work, try Jesus. He truly is all you need in life. When you are struggling, when you are low, when you are battling with anything, Jesus is all you need. And I would encourage you, there's people that we have in our lives who are battling with addictions. And if you know someone who could use this program, who could find uh, a help, I trust Teen Challenge. I trust them to, to look after our family, our friends well. If, if someone that you know needs this program, then, then I encourage you, put them in touch. Because this is something where it is up to the Holy Spirit. And they know. <laughs> it is up to God. And they understand. But they help people to come to know God. And like I say with Lance, I saw the evidence in his life of a changed life. We see these testimonies. Changed lives. And indeed for each one of us, Christ changes our lives. Thank you so much for being with us, Wing. Thank you for presenting this program and letting us see the work of God in a way that we maybe didn't get to see every day. God is at work in our world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to call the, the team up and we're going to do one last song.